what we're going to be working on in content. Scope, quality, cost, and time. And remember, once we, de we define the scope clearly, once we figure out the quality requirements, at that point we can tell people, well, it'll cost this much money and take this amount of time to do this. So this is the content we'll be working with. Processes. Let's talk about the processes. So now we know what our content is. What are the processes we work with? Communication. We'll talk a little more about communication in some of the subsequent slides. But in general, every project team has to have a communication plan. It just We have to know how we communicate with each other. We have to know who else has to be communicated with. Who do we need to get information from? Who do we need to get, give information to? So communication will be a big piece of working together. And what does that communication look like? What do our processes look like for doing that? Problem solving? We just need to figure out how we solve problems in here. And again, we've looked at, uh, in some previous modules, we've looked at different decision-making uh, styles. Some of that's going to help us with problem solving. Some of the things that we do will be creative problem solving along the way. So we need to figure out how we're going to create ideas and how we're going to be creative about things. We also need to manage difficult issues that come up. We'll have a little grid that can help us with that that we'll look at soon. And we need to figure out how to share responsibility. One of the things we need to do is make handoffs along the way from one team member to another. So we put a process in place for that. Process in place for that would cause us to not have problems like one team had. One team had, it was a classroom training session. They provided classroom training sessions. They didn't have very many good processes to make handoffs from one to another. So what happened was they were putting on a training session and somebody in the group had arranged a room. Somebody in the group had arranged materials, so all the materials were printed. Somebody in the room had arranged for all of the participants to be in the training. So on training day, the room is set up, the training materials are on the tables, all the people are sitting in their chairs, but along the way there was one dependency line that went from one task box to another on the schedule that said, okay, now this leads to getting a trainer. Nobody made the handoff to get the trainer, so now there's a whole group of people sitting in here, materials sitting there, everybody ready to go. There's nobody that's going to come in and do any of the training for this group. It was just forgotten. So we have to figure out how we're going to make handoffs along the way with all these things. We look at our Team Foundations Triangle here again. We find that we put people, remember, on the team because of their subject matter expertise. What comes along with them? Their problem solving skills and their interpersonal skills. So we put people on the project team just based on what they know how to do. We don't even think about how they're going to work with others. All of a sudden we get people on the project team and now we as project managers and now team leaders, because that's our other role as project manager, being the team leader, we have to figure out oh, how do we get these people to work together in any kind of reasonable way at all. Everyone brings something to the team. It's our job to bring all of that out and get the team to work together well with all of their expertise and all of their interpersonal skills along the way. So everybody brings their, their skills and their knowledge about the topics. We also have them bring their interpersonal skills as well. When we're setting those uh, goals for the team, sometimes they're set for the team and sometimes the team gets to set them themselves. Either one of those can lead to good project, uh, project teamwork as long as we have these. We just need to know where we're going with this project. There are a couple of other things we need to do just as a starting point to give us a good solid foundation for teamwork. One, clarification of the project, the results, the deliverables. Clarification of the roles. What's the team leader role? What's the project manager role? What's the, the role of the team members? What are the roles of all the people that support this project? What are the roles of the stakeholders? What are the roles of the, of the customers in here? What are the roles of the vendors? How do we work with them along the way? Our, our suppliers, our contractors, how do we work with everybody? The project manager has to bring the team together and manage the teamwork throughout the project. So this is what the project manager is going to be doing all along the way. Dues and responsibilities. The first duty and responsibility that every project team has is do the project. That's it. Complete all of the project tasks. We have to collaborate. So somehow we're going to have to work together. You may have seen project teams that all work as individuals and somehow never share information with each other. Sometimes that's because they don't communicate 
or sometimes it's because they don't communicate well or they don't communicate enough or they don't communicate about enough things. Showing respect. We need to show respect for each other. I know some things and you don't know this, but it doesn't mean that because I know this one thing and you don't, that I don't have any respect for you because you don't know anything that's wrong. Every project team member has some area of expertise. There's one project team, you can't really call them a team, it's a group, and everyone is very proud of their expertise. And they don't have any respect for anybody else's expertise. All they can do is point out that, well, you don't know what I know, so you must not be very smart. Their projects don't do very well. Their projects are always over budget. Their projects are always late. The quality sometimes really suffers. Um, they have a real hard time working together. Sharing information and ideas and opinions. Sharing ideas, information, and opinions. Again, that project team never shares any information, ideas, and opinions. Other project teams do, and they do very well with this. Solving problems, making decisions. All of these are things that we have to do together as a project team. One of the things that will help us do this well is just talking with each other. So first of all, we have to talk with each other. So that we have to say some words. And in that process, we have to listen to each other. When we listen to each other, that also means that we have to understand each other. Do we agree with each other? Maybe we do or maybe we don't. Through enough discussion, we can finally come to some, some area of agreement. But the first thing we have to do is actually speak with each other, listen to each other, and then understand each other. So there's a process that we go through with verbal communication that helps us do that. What we're going to need to do with the communication in the project is to figure out a few things. Who needs to be in our communication loops? How do we, I'm a project team member. Who do I need to be communicating with? I need to get some information from some of the team members. I need to give information to some of the team members. I need to work somehow with the project manager along the way. There may be some stakeholders I have to work with along the way and communicate back and forth with. Who are all of those people? Why do they even need to be in this loop? Probably because they either have information that we need or they have to have information that we have. And how can we keep all of these people informed? What level of detail do they need? How often do they need to be communicated with? What types of information do different people need? Sometimes you as the, as the team leader are going to have to get information from your team, has to come to you, and sometimes you'll have to give information to your team. We're going to talk about verbal communication. Verbal communication is the starting point for all of our communication, and then we can also add charts and graphs and videos. We can add some visual things along the way to help with our communication. But verbal communication is the foundation for all of it. So we have Daryl and Clyde here that are going to communicate. There are four steps. We have four, four steps to verbal communication and then we will talk about an additional step that we might decide to add into this. First of all, Daryl has an idea. What happens with communication? It all starts with an idea in our head. So we have our project team members sitting around here. Everybody has ideas in their head. We have to get those ideas out so that everyone can discuss those. We can work with them together as a team. So get the ideas out. Daryl has this idea in his head. So now he's going to say some words that convey those ideas. The first thing that Daryl is going to do is encode that idea. That idea originally looks like some chemicals floating around and some little electronic things snapping around in the brain. There's some little nerve endings sending out some electronic images or messages in the brain. Uh, there were um, some people who won a Nobel Prize just a few years ago for figuring out what that idea looks like in somebody's head. Now that idea in somebody's head has to get transmitted to somebody else's head. It has to get into their brain and it has to be the same idea that gets into their brain. First way we're going to do that is say some words. We're going to make some sounds. Daryl's going to figure out, okay, I have to turn this idea these electronic signals and these chemicals floating around, I have to turn those into some sort of sounds. What will those sounds be? The encoding process is figuring out the sounds. Then we're going to transmit those sounds. So Daryl will transmit those sounds. And what does that look like? This is the foundation for all of verbal communication for people. You breathe in, you breathe out. When you breathe out, you breathe over those little strings in your throat, you breathe over those. Tighten them up, loosen them up a little bit to give it different tones. That air comes up into this cavity you have in your head called a mouth. That air goes up there and starts to bounce around. And in there, you're going to make different shapes with your tongue to make different shapes inside there for the air to bounce around and 
whirl around in, and you're gonna make different shapes with your mouth to make sounds come out differently. So all of that air comes up through the air, bounces around in here, your tongue makes different shapes, comes out your mouth, and some kind of sound comes out because of all that. So now that's the whole transmitting process. So let's say Daryl decides he's going to send some kind of a message over here to Clyde. Let's see. Ah, this is what I'm going to say. Ah, bon dia. Clyde receives that message. What does that look like? Receiving looks like the sound waves that have come out of, the, the air that's come out of Daryl's mouth has turned into sound waves in the air. Those sound waves go right into Clyde's ear here, right in there, right in the little hole in the side of his head. And they start to shake a little piece of skin around in there. That eardrum starts to rattle around. It starts to shake some bones around in there. It starts to squirt some chemicals or some liquid around in there. Then it starts to rustle some hairs around in there. Then all kinds of electronic signals start in the brain here. And some chemicals start floating around in Clyde's brain. He's received this. And what he's doing now is decoding this. So we hope that Clyde actually even got this message, that the sound waves even got here and got in, inside so that now Clyde can actually start to decode this. Clyde starts to decode all of this, and then Clyde says, what? When Clyde gets this information and doesn't understand it, if he doesn't say anything, it's one-way communication. Daryl has encoded, transmitted, Clyde received, and decoded. One-way communication. When we do one-way communication, we send things out, we hope for the best. We're in a project team. We tell people to go do things. They go off and they do something completely different than what we imagined. We send an email to somebody. It goes out there. They do something completely different than what we wanted them to do. Why? Because they decoded this differently than we meant it to be understood. So um, an example of this, a uh, friend of mine, uh, very nice guy, John. Wonderful guy, high energy guy, has three very high energy boys. The four of them together are just wild all the time. They have one woman in that house, Judy, the mother of these boys, John's wife, very mild-mannered woman who just takes care of everybody and keeps all of these four from flying off the edge of the earth. They're having a dinner party. The first guest that arrives at John's house knocks on the door. John opens up the door, and John's laughing, and the boys are standing there scared. They just have this horrified look on their face. They're just scared. They're just frozen in place. John says to this guest, come on in and help me with this. And John's laughing, and this guest says, John, what's going on here? Said, just get to work here. This guest also hears Judy in the kitchen slamming around, banging things around out there and swearing. Very uncharacteristic for Judy. So this guest looks around and says, OK, John, what's going on here? John says, well, here's what happened. Judy's getting ready for this party. Party's almost ready. Judy forgot one thing for one recipe. She says, boys, I have to run down to the store. I have to get one thing for one recipe. If your dad gets home before I get back, tell him I'll be back in a few minutes. She runs down to the store, runs back, opens up the door of the house. These three boys have decided that's the very best time they could ever think of to throw every single toy they own all over the entire house. The entire house is covered with all of their toys now. So Judy's a little angry about this. So she says, all right, boys, I'm going out in that kitchen. I'm going to work on this recipe. I'll be back here in five minutes. When I come back, I don't want to see one single toy on the floor of this house. So she goes back out there. John gets home about now and says, boys, this is interesting. What's going on here? They explain it to him. John starts to laugh about this. Oh, this is just silly. OK, let's get to work on this. Now Judy comes back and looks around and says, well, you little devils. Because when she looks, the boys have put all of the toys on top of the dining room table. They're all over the chairs. They're all over the sofa in the living room. They're all over all the furniture in the entire house. There's not one single toy on the floor. So Judy's really angry. And now she's really going to punish the boys severely. And John says, wait a minute. You can't do that. They did exactly what you told them to do. That's when Judy got really angry. As project managers, sometimes we let people know what we would like them to do. Off we go, we come back and they've done something completely silly, completely different than what we'd expected. Maybe what they did was exactly what we told them to do, simply because 
we didn't put this extra piece in here where Daryl says, Bon dia. And Clyde says, uh, what? Because Clyde didn't understand that we've communicated, we've completed the communication loop with feedback. Feedback is nothing more than the same four steps, encode, transmit, receive, and decode going backwards. So Clyde says, what? And then Daryl says, oh wait, I've been traveling. Oh yes, I just got back yesterday. I'm sorry, I forgot where I was at. Oh, yeah, Clyde, I'm sorry. Uh, I meant, good morning, how are you today? Um, Clyde says, oh, I'm doing great. Yeah, how was your trip? Oh, the trip was really good. Um, you know, I had a nice time, brought some stuff back for the family. I know that you were doing some stuff with your family while I was gone, had a little vacation. How did that go? We got a great time, we had a lot of pictures, everybody had a great time, and we went out canoeing. We, uh, so back and forth we have this conversation going on. That completes our feedback loop. That's the way that now the person sending the message and the person receiving the message both end up with the same idea in their heads. Now we clearly understand each other. In your project team, people have to talk back and forth. They have to say words back and forth to each other, not just one person talking and everybody else just sitting there listening and you just hope for the best. So if you're the project leader, the team leader in this project, you need to listen to people as well. We have two ears and one mouth as project managers because we're supposed to listen twice as much as we speak, at least twice as much. So one-way communication, these four steps. Two-way communication, we add feedback to the loop.